Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Larry with Packmaster Dog Training here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, teaching desired behaviors. Behaviors. Can't talk today. Um, as opposed to stopping unwanted behaviors. I saw a, a post from Gary Wilkes today on Facebook. He, he, he wrote something about stopping a dog with a, an e-collar that tried taking off when he was working him next to, to a, uh, a dog park. And it was a very good post. Gary writes a lot of really, really good stuff and, and writes a lot of stuff. And, it, and it's all very beneficial. So if you haven't been reading this stuff, you should check it out, whether you're a dog trainer or just a dog owner. But it was a very good post and it got me thinking. I film a lot of stuff about about teaching things and I you know and I show a lot of stuff about you know fixing behaviors and stuff but I want to make it very clear to people and I don't think I have been um, when I teach something when I'm training to teach a dog something you know we use motivation it takes a lot of repetitions and time so we use time repetitions and motivation to show the dog what we want and then we practice it over and over and over now the exact opposite when we want to stop a bad behavior it's very simple you stop it fast hopefully one time is all it takes when done correctly and too many people are pussyfooting around this and they they don't talk about it enough or they they don't show it or they just refuse to do it all right and uh, i don't think i've talked about it enough so let me give you an example this is an example i use for my clients when i teach workshops and i use this example because i think it's a perfect example i get a call this is a few years back I get a call as people find this dog, mixed breed dog, medium sized dog, living on the, the one of the highways down in Nashville, Tennessee. They rescue this dog, they want to bring it into its home, but the dog is extremely reactive towards their cats. You know, hey, the thing's been living wild, it's probably been eating cats for all we know. Well, the people want to keep this dog in the home. So they said, can you fix it from chasing cats? I said, yeah, yeah, I could definitely, pretty sure I could fix that. So I take the dog, dog, dog in, here we go again to do uh, I think it was a two-week board and train and I start training this dog like I do every other dog you know for the most part we start conditioning the dog to the e-collar dog is doing super super well on the e-collar working on very very low levels um, coming to me you know with the long line on every time out around real distraction so the dog is pretty much conditioned to the e-collar and doing very well so I think it was about at the one, one week mark or sometime within the first week or slightly after the first week, I see three cats in my neighbor's yard. So I say, okay, it's time to fix this right now. So I put the dog on a long line. Um, I go out there, I start walking in that direction. The dog is healing nice, uh, next to me very nicely. Now remember, this dog works on single digits. I put the e-collar on the highest level it goes. I think I was using Dogtras at the time, 280, so it goes up to 127. This dog worked on like a level three or four, okay? So very, very high. The dog sees the cats and it takes off. And as soon as that dog took off, before it could hit the end of that leash, I hit that dog on the highest level possible and it yelped and did a flip around and came running back. But guess what? The dog's head wasn't down, the dog wasn't freaked out, there were no negative side effects. At that moment, what I did, I went right back down to the dog's working levels, and I started training and working on things it knew with reward. Okay, no negative side effects, none at all, because the dog already understood the meaning of the e-collar. All right, so that, that was that day. A couple of days later, I go for a walk at night, and I didn't plan on doing this here. It just happened, so I took advantage of it. We go for a walk at night, and I see a rabbit up the street on my neighbor's lawn. So this time, I put the e-collar on a number 40. Still much higher than what it, its working level is, but not nearly as high as I did with the cats. Okay, so the second the dog saw that, that rabbit, it made a little move like it was going to go take off. I tapped that collar one time. Dog left out a little yelp, and that was it. We went back to working on our working levels with rewarding, and guess what? I never had to raise the e-collar again. The dog wasn't chasing cats, it wasn't chasing rabbits, it wasn't chasing anything, and there were absolutely no negative side effects. The dog was upbeat and happy, just like every other dog you see me work with, okay? So uh, I, I'm, get, I'm glad Gary posted that because it made me think I don't talk enough about you know using corrections to that level do i have to do that very often no i don't when you teach the e-collar correctly a lot of times you'll never have to do that but there are going to be times guys you you're going to have to so when i get a call from someone and they said my dog's doing this i can't stop and i'm thinking about getting them trained okay great and when you call me back a year later and you haven't done anything and you're still uh, you know i think i might want to i might need your help 
don't call me. I, I don't I don't want to deal with people like that. It's absolutely ridiculous to put up with some of the behaviors you people put up with with your dogs. It's very easy for the most part to stop most behaviors and it happens very, very fast. Okay. Now I'm not telling the average dog owner to go try these things. That's why you need to hire a professional. All right. Um, now what the owners didn't tell me about this situation was when I reintroduced this dog into the home with the cats, they didn't tell me they had saved or rescued a feral cat that took several weeks just to come out of the crate on its own. And as soon as this cat saw this dog, guess what? I realized the dog wasn't the biggest problem we had. That cat came for the dog. And so people ask me, have I ever been bitten badly when training? Yeah, one time by that friggin' cat. I've been bit before, but the worst bite I ever got was from that cat. It came, it was ready to fight. So that was, a, I can't train cats, but guess what? Because we trained the dog and the dog no longer had that, that, um, that want and that need to chase the cats, very easily they learned to live with each other. And there wasn't a problem anymore. So uh, I don't, hopefully I'm not forgetting. I want to make myself very clear here. So Gary, thanks for posting that. That was, that was a good reminder. Guys, you want to teach something, repetitions, motivation, it takes a little bit of time. You want to stop something, you want to fix something, do it fast, okay? Let these dogs stay in the home, fix the problems, peace.